Hello, it's me Dan here again with another tutorial on the Korg monologue. So I tend to use synths a little bit differently to how other people use synths, especially in the um, Reddit community, people are more inclined to live jams, doorless setups with MIDI cables and clock syncing and all that sort of stuff, uh, which is totally fine. I tend to use my synths more in multi-tracking into a DAW and uh, creating tracks like that. Uh, so one thing that the Korg monologue is really good at doing is making drum samples. Um, I tend to love doing that because it, you're, you're creating samples essentially that no one else has. Uh, instead of using like sample packs, which is a totally legit way of uh, making beats, but creating it yourself is sort of more unique and you have much more control in, in terms of the sound um, of your samples. So let's get started. I'm going to show you how to make a kick. Okay, first of all, let's uh, initialize the patch. So hit edit mode, make sure it's in program edit, second to last blinking light, twist that, that knob and then until this is press right and then press right. And we have a initialized patch. So a kick, an electronic kick, is uh, essentially uh, a rapidly pitch, a modulating pitch from high to low on a very basic um, waveform. So normally you would use a sine wave, but the Korg monologue doesn't have a sine shape. Um, it only has the triangle, so we'll be using the triangle today. There is a way you can kind of hack a sine wave on the monologue that I'll show you for the second method of making a kick, but we'll do this first. So switch it to triangle. So I'm just going to turn up my volume a little bit. So we've got a triangle. To, uh, switch it two octaves down. Got that nice low note. And then, uh, so how to pitch down, modulate that pitch. Make sure you're in this first uh, envelope shape, so which is like a, a pluck or a one shot. So it's gonna play the, the attack and the decay as kind of a release, no matter how long you hold the note down. Um, and then switch it to pitch and then turn up the intensity. So what you're going to hear is a do of the pitch and depending on high, high, high <laughs> depending on how high you turn up the intensity. The higher you go, the higher the pitch it's going to go. So just adjust that, adjust the decay to be shorter, and then you've got a kick. Just going to turn it up a little bit. So there we have a kick. And the higher the intensity you go, the more sort of brighter and clicky it's going to sound, and the lower you go, uh, the sort of uh, more basic and, and darker it will sound. So higher up and lower down. Yeah, so there's, there's a kick for you. So let's beef it up with the drive function, the distortion. Let's turn that up. Sorry, I am clipping. So the distortion has brought in a bunch of har oh, it's a higher harmonics. So just to tame that, let's uh, mess with the filter. Make sure the resonance is right down and mess with the filter. And there you have it, uh, a kick. 
and mess around with the decay and, and the intensity just to adjust the tone. So you can have a real short punchy kick with the decay shorter. Or a long. Much sort of drawn out kick. Let's go with the punchy and then adjust the intensity to change the sort of tone and pitch of it. Yeah, I like it there. And you could make it darker with the cutoff. So now you can record that into a DAW and throw it into a sampler um, and record some, some kicks. All right, let's show you the second method of making a kick. Let's initialize the patch again, program edit, make sure, click that uh, second to the last button, twist that knob, press the right, initialize patch. Okay, so I did mention a way to hack a sign shape on the monologue. To do this, Let's use VCO2, so let's turn down VCO1 and just have VCO2, which on, on noise. So we've got some noise. Wait, all right, so how to hack a sign. Let's turn up the resonance to max and turn down the cutoff almost to the bottom. And what this will do, the resonance is so extreme, the Q is so um, narrow that you are essentially making a sine tone. And the lower you go, the more pure it's going to be. And you can already see, there's a ton of sine tone there. Um, so yeah, so pretty much do exactly what we did with the triangle but with this instead. So let's go into that pluck envelope shape, um, turn the decay down and then intensity up and instead of pitch we are going to be going with cutoff. So now the cutoff dictates uh, the pitch. So, so we'll go to cutoff and then turn up the intensity. And now you can change the cutoff to change the overall pitch. So just turn it up a little bit so you can hear it. So that's another way of making a kick. Um, so let's bring in some drive again. Um, just turn down the volume. And to sort of adjust how much of that sort of bright top end you have, just turn down the intensity. And just mess around with the drive. And the decay. So one way to have a little bit more control over um, the sort of decay or uh, release time of of the transient is so instead of using the envelope shape to modulate the pitch, you can actually use the LFO on the one shot. So let's do that. Just turn down the envelope here. I mean the intensity of the envelope and then we'll go to cut off again. Uh, intensity, rate, and then make sure it's a one shot and that ramp down shape, that sawtooth. And now you'll have exactly the same parameters um, that we had on the envelope. 
now on the LFO. So just adjusting the intensity and the rate. And now you have more control over the um, decay. Because before, the longer the decay, the longer the pitch modulation, or the slower the pitch modulation. But because you're controlling the pitch modulation with the LFO now, um, you can uh, increase the decay and it's not going to change that pitch. Just turning down the drive a little bit. So this is a way to create um, pretty much one of those 808 bass type kicks. All right, one thing you'll notice, no matter where on the keyboard I am playing, it's going to be exactly the same note. That's because the cutoff is static. Um, so one way to make it so that it's tracked to your keyboard is to turn on the keyboard tracking for the cutoff. So to do that, go into edit mode and then make sure you're in program edit and it's the fourth button here. And click it again and it says cutoff key track. Turn that to 100 and now it's pitched to your keyboard. One thing to note though, it's not going to be tuned. So this may not be a C. Uh, so you're going to have to either use a tuner or another instrument as a reference and to tune it just adjust the, the cutoff. So yeah, that's another way of making a kick. So you can actually combine the two methods. So because each method I've shown you has only used uh, one VCO at a time. So if we brought in uh, VCO one now, um, and how am I gonna do this? Let's initialize the patch. Initializing the patch, you know how to do it. Uh, so go back to how we had VCO1 and then uh, add in the noise and then let's do let's do the pitch for VCO1. Let's, let's take away VCO2 for now. Make sure it's on that pluck shape, decay. Exactly how we made it before. Bring in VCO2 with the noise, and then uh, use the cutoff to. Well, let's try using um, the noise, and we'll we'll use the filter to to sort of shape off shape the noise. Let's bring in some drive. So it just adds, you can adjust the mix obviously. Just adds another layer of, um, of texture, I guess. So without VCO2, with it. So let's uh, let's add the uh, a filter envelope with the LFO LFO. So one shot down um, the ramp down sawtooth. Make sure you're on cutoff. Turn up the intensity. Turn down the filter. Maybe turn up the resonance a bit. So 
So, yeah, that's another sort of different sounding kick. Let's turn down the drive a bit. Turn down the decay. And you could uh, maybe let's try changing the shape from noise to uh, sawtooth. And turn down the cutoff. Adjusting the intensity of the LFO. So that's, yeah, another way of making a kick using a combination of the two methods that I showed you. So there you have it, some kicks on the Korg Monologue. Pretty, pretty beefy sounding, really. It's, it's an amazing synth to be able to do these kick sounds. And this is just out of the Korg Monologue, no post-processing at all. So if you want, you can add a, a saturator, you could add some compression, some EQ to really sort of craft the shape a little bit more and tone of the kick. Um, maybe use a transient shaper to add some more attack. But, I mean, that sounds pretty nice. That's a, that's a pretty beefy kick. So, next video, I'm going to show you how to make a snare on the cork monologue. So, stay tuned for that. All right. Goodbye.